Hi everyone, I'm going to show you how the cross-validation module works in Snowden Supervisor software. As you can see, I already have my continuity model set up. To do the cross-validation, you simply right-click, hit Add, and there's a cross-validation option. The cross-validation comes in under your variograms because it uses the variograms to do calculations. As you can see, we have a scatter plot set up and a histogram. Cross validation works is it removes each sample in turn and does a point estimate at that location using the variograms and the ordinary Kriging equations. It then compares the true sample input grade with the estimated grade. Before you run your cross validation, you need to choose what parameters you're going to use for your point estimate. This is done on the right hand side under the cross validation tab. At the top we have search angles. The default angles here are the angles that you've chosen under your variography. If you don't want to use the angles that you've chosen for your variography, you can simply tick off this box and type in whatever angles you would like to use. If you do want to use the angles that you've used in your variography, just simply tick that box on. It's the same with the search range. It will automatically pick up the ranges that you've set in your variography. Once again, if you don't want to use them, just tick off that box and you can type in whatever you like for ranges. If you do want to use the defaults from the variography, then tick on that box and it will use the ranges that you've set in your variography. Next thing to look at is the number of samples. For this particular example, I'm going to choose 8 as a minimum and say 32 as a maximum. There's two other options here. One is the maximum samples per drill hole and the other one is to use the samples from the same drill hole. For these two options to work, you must import the whole ID when you import your data. If you do not, you will not be able to use these two options. To use the maximum samples per drill hole, simply tick on the box and you can set your maximum at whatever you like. For this particular example, I'm going to choose four. If you don't want to use samples from the same drill hole, you can just tick off that box. Or if you do want to use samples from the same drill hole, you can just simply leave the box on. For this particular example, I will use samples from the same drill hole. Once you're satisfied with the parameters that you've chosen, you can hit update and it will run through a point estimate for each sample location. Once the point estimates have been run and your scatter plot created, you can now look at some of the results. First one that we're going to look at here is the mean error. What we're looking for is a mean error as close to zero as possible. This checks for unbiasedness. Next one we have is the mean absolute error. What we're looking for here is a mean absolute error as close to zero as possible. The next two are that mean error squared and the mean Kriging variance. What we're looking for here are two values that are approximately equal and as close to zero as possible. The next one we're looking at is our mean sample value. So this is our input mean. And of course, we want our mean estimate value to be approximately equal to the mean sample value. The correlation coefficient, we would like to be as close to one as possible. In our linear regression here, the first part is the intercept, and we would like this to be as close to zero as possible. And the second number is the slope, which we would like to be as close to one as possible. If you want to look at your results in more detail, there's a results tab on the bottom left hand side. You can click on this. It shows the whole ID, the XYZ coordinates for your samples, the input assay value, your Krieg estimate at that location, the number of points that were used, and the Krieging variance associated with that estimate. If you want to export these, you can just simply right click on here export and export that to a CSV file. Over on the left hand side we also have a histogram that is associated with cross-validation. 
we click on there and update what it shows us are the two histograms for our input samples and our estimates what we're looking for here are two histograms that are as similar as possible I'll now take you back to the cross validation module and show you how you can change the appearance of your charts if you would like to do so these results here can simply be moved around by clicking on them and dragging them where you like and you can make them larger or smaller by just clicking and dragging here if you'd like to put these results into a report you can just simply right click here copy to clipboard copy and it will go straight into a word document paste there's a tab at the top right here the draw tab uh, there's a few options here that we can use we can plot creed versus sample or sample versus creed if you would like to change colors you can do that here so we might pick a yellow same with regression lines and the one one line um, you can also have the option of turning those on or off you have the options of using the same scale on the x and y axes if you don't want your results you can just simply tick that box and it will get rid of them all or if there's any particular one that you don't want to look at you can simply just turn them on and off here as you like you can also increase or decrease the number of decimals here next to the draw tab is a graph tab there's an automatic title but if you'd like to write your own title you can just click off that and type in whatever you like we also have a draw grids tab so if you'd like to draw some grids you can background colors we can change also similar options for the x and y axes auto title you can turn on and off and put what in whatever you like you also have the option of a log scale or not and it's the same with the y axes you can draw grids if you like and change those grid colors to whatever you would like I'll take you back to the histogram tab again where you can also change the appearance if you choose so a few options here if we tick that box we now have the cumulative distribution you can tick that on or off there the vertical axis here has the frequency you can change that to count if you like you can turn your means on and off and you can overlay the CDF if you choose if you want to have a log scale you can also choose a log scale here once again if you want to change the colors there are options here to change the colors as well also at the top right hand side there are tabs for the graph the x and the y axes they are the same as before this particular example I've shown you has been for data that has not been transformed so what happens if we do say for example a normal score transform or an indicator transform I have another variogram that I've set up here for another data set that has had a normal score transform completed it's exactly the same as before we can add our cross validation under our continuity models and set up our parameters we use the same as before say a minimum of eight samples and a maximum of 32. in the previous example i had imported the drill hole id so i was able to use the maximum number of samples per drill hole or choose if I wanted to use samples from the same drill hole this particular data set has not had the sample ID imported so if I go to use the maximum number of samples I get an error warning down the bottom right hand side telling me that no drill hole ID has been imported I'm happy with these options so I can hit update and it will run through 
Now, because I've done a normal score transform, all the values are now between minus 4 and plus 4. It's exactly the same as before concerning the statistics here. And now you can also check your results again. You can see the whole ID column is blank because we did not import the whole ID. We have the X, Y, Z coordinates, the transformed assay value, and the Krieg estimate of that transformed value. The number of points used and the Krieging variance. It's the same with the histogram. We can check our histograms and the distributions for each of them. Because it's a normal score transform, it has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. For indicator transforms, we can also run a cross-validation. If we go to our log probability plot, I already have a indicator variogram set up at the 50th percentile. Once again, under continuity models, right click add, cross-validation. Set our parameters, the same as before, and update. You can see here on our samples, because it's an indicator transform, we either have a value of zero or a value of one. We can then look at the spread of the Krieg estimates for those particular values. We can also look at our histogram. Because of the transform, our input histogram is not very useful, but what we can do is look at the distribution of the estimates here. Thanks for watching Snowden's presentation on cross-validation. Please contact Snowden for further details.